What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2018 BMW M4. All right, my good people, behind me today, we're gonna to be working on the F82. We're gonna be installing Eventuri's intake for this vehicle, which is available on fcpuro.com. It comes with all the hardware necessary to do this DIY. We have filters, ducting, tubes, you name it. We have some rivets and some hardware for the MAP sensors as well. Just keep that in mind, that's very important. As these are carbon fiber pipes, they are a little bit different and it's gonna require different hardware for your MAP sensor. Otherwise, it's all gonna be pretty plug and play. This is gonna be applicable to all F8X, M3s, and M4s. Now, before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna to need for this job. For this DIY, we're gonna be using a torque wrench. I have two drivers here, the flexible CTA screwdrivers. I have a six millimeter and seven millimeter hex. However, you can substitute those for sockets and or flathead screwdrivers. I have a small pick. I have some long reach needle nose pliers that'll help with some of the rivets that are tight to get. We have a 10 and a 13 millimeter socket, as well as a seven, again, to substitute that flexible driver. We have a T20 and a T30. I'll be using a quarter inch ratchet with an extension today. I have these rivet removing pliers, which come in really handy. And then some really nice to have is always an electrical ratchet and a flashlight, especially when we get to removing the grills. Now we know what we're working with, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, we are gonna start by removing some cowling on either the driver and passenger side so we can work on getting our strut brace off. To do that, I'm using a 10 millimeter socket. Just by hand, we're gonna do a counterclockwise turn, about 90 degrees on all three locking nuts up top. They're just three plastic 10 millimeter nuts. We have a rivet to remove by the hood shock. Then you can go ahead and pull up and just set it to the side. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the passenger side now. When we can lift up and remove. Now we have a total of eight 13 millimeter bolts to remove around the strut, as well as a 10 millimeter bolt that secures our expansion tank to the strut brace. So let's go ahead and remove that. I'm using a 13 on my electric ratchet. Let's go ahead and zap these off. Just one thing to note, on these 13s for the two front, they are the shortest out of the eight. So just make sure the two short ones go back up front. Now with that removed on both the driver and passenger side, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and lift up this rubber weather stripping so you can let the strut brace clear when you remove it. These are usually held in by a rivet up front here. One more thing after removing the rivet for this weather stripping, don't forget the 10 millimeter bolt that goes to your expansion tank. And then on the passenger side, the weather stripping is just kind of held into place. It's got some rubber, uh, some rubber slits in the middle of it that kind of key in to the rest of the weather stripping. Now you can just go ahead and remove the strut brace carefully. We're gonna work on removing this uh, left-hand side intake, starting by undoing our clamp. You can use a flat, flathead screwdriver or a six millimeter socket. I have a six millimeter driver on this flexible CTA screwdriver. Beautiful. Up top here, you have a coolant line that you want to free up from this intake pipe. Just lift that up like that. And you have a small clip that kind of helps stabilize it. Two tabs, one on either end that you push in together. Just rotate it to the side. Now to release the mass airflow sensor, there's a small clip that you push in. I like to push the connector into the sensor as I press this in and then pull back to release it. Just kind of helps sometimes they get jammed up. Set that to the side. Underneath this coolant line that we freed up from the pipe, we have one more vacuum line that we want to free up. It's got ridged edges on either side of it. You want to pinch those. And same thing kind of like we did with the sensor. I recommend you push in a bit and then pull back to release it. Sometimes the O-rings in there get a little stuck and it makes it a little bit harder to come out. So, I'm just gonna push, push in, and free. Now we can work on undoing our pipe from the hose clamp that we disconnected there earlier. And we're gonna work this whole unit out as one piece. This end is just held in by rubber grommets, so we're just gonna pop them out of its place. Now we can go ahead and focus on the right-hand side of the car and do the same thing. 
Over here, I'm gonna start by disconnecting the max airflow sensor, similar to how we did on the other side. Just be careful with your beauty cover. Go ahead and tuck it under there. Can't forget that later. Flathead screwdriver or six millimeter bit for that hose clamp. We can pop this air box up. Again, just two rubber grommets that hold it into place. We have one more clamp to release on the inside of this elbow using our same six millimeter bit or flathead screwdriver. Just give it a little twist, it'll come right off. With that removed, I'm gonna take a moment to kind of clean up our work area and clean up the spaces where these beautiful intakes are gonna be sitting. There's a little bit of road grime I wanna get rid of. And I'm gonna meet you back at the bench so we can transition our mass airflow sensors over into our new elbow cell. So catch in a moment. Before we start installing any fancy ducting and new elbows and pipes into our car, what I want to do next is I want to get the elbow and the tube ready to go for once we get to that point. And by that, I mean we're going to swap over the mass airflow sensors. So on your main pipe connected to the driver's side bank air box, we're going to use a T25 to remove the two factory screws. And we're just going to lay the new pipe next to it in the same direction so that we can easily remove and drop into the pipe. These sensors also have an arrow on them uh, with airflow or the direction that the airflow should be going. So you just want to make sure that that arrow is pointing in the same direction when you install it on your new carbon piece. Now we're going to go ahead and take our T20 and remove the hardware that holds our sensor to the old intake. You want to remember that even Turi supplies you with new hardware. You have to use what they have sent you as these screws are intended to go into the stock plastic housing. They gave you new hardware for the nice carbon bits. All right. Nice and even, the holes line up beautifully. Go ahead and hand start the new hardware if you can. And you're gently gonna snug these down. They're not gonna take a whole lot of torque. I snugged them down by hand and then gave them almost half a turn once they bottomed out, so not a whole lot. And do the same. For our next one, this one's on the stock airbox lid. Again, T20. If you can see this on camera, this is a better shot at that arrow. Again, it points in the direction that the air is feeding into the engine. So from the filter to the motor. We'll go ahead and seat it into our new elbow for the passenger bank. Same thing, we'll start the T20s by hand. They're not going in gently. Mess with the alignment of the sensor a little bit. Go ahead and snug them up. All right, these are all gonna be good to go. Now let's head back to the M4 and start on installing some of our ducting. Now my good people, we're gonna work on installing our ducting first. We're starting on the driver hand side first. We have our driver's side ducting. The driver and passenger are both very different. They only fit one way. On the carbon piece, you have two small holes for the rivets to lock into the factory ducting on the vehicle end. Out of the eight rivets that come with the kit, two or four of them are bigger. Those bigger ones are gonna be used for our ducting. We're gonna go ahead and feed this into place. You can see down there we have our holes lined up somewhat close enough. You can always pull up on the factory ducting to even them up a little bit more and get your rivet started. I'm gonna use some long reach pliers so I can get this in there and not completely destroy the view for both you and I. With that fed end, then you want to push the rest of the head in and make sure it locks into place. Beautiful. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. And just push the button in and lock it. Next, we're going to take our left hand pipe, or driver's side, I should say, and feed one of the rubber clamps on, rubber connecting elbows. You may need to undo them a bit from factory. For these, you can use a seven millimeter socket. I'm using a seven millimeter hex bit on the end of the CTA flexible screwdriver, or you can use a regular flathead screwdriver, whichever one will be perfectly fine. We got these started on our pipe. Once you have the clamp where you want it, you can go ahead and tighten the inside one if you'd like. I'm gonna leave them both loose so that I can tighten them at the same height and they look kind of even. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and kind of just sit it over. And we're gonna join our filter end to it. 
You always want to make sure you're pushing from the outside. You never want to push on the inside of the filter. And we're going to leave it loose so we can rotate it and adjust it as we need. So let's go ahead and feed this in to both the engine side of things as well as our ducting. You want to make sure that the filter can clip into the old rubber grommet that held in our stock air box. This one's located right up top here by this AC line. All right, at this point, everything looks pretty happy. We're going to start by tightening our clamps over by the expansion tank and then just working our way back. All right, when you tighten these, you want to be very gentle. You can easily crack the carbon. So once the clamp feels pretty tight, that's when you want to stop. Again, I'm not using a lot of force. You can see my fingers are slipping easily on the driver here. It's better to just do that and drive the car and maybe have something fall off or pop off by accident than it would be to have that carbon crack. While you're here, you can reconnect your mass airflow sensor as well as your vacuum line. Start with the vacuum line first, mass airflow sensor. Down here, you can make sure our pipe is fed in properly into our accordion end of things. Once we're happy with where it's sitting, we're going to take the same six millimeter bit or flathead screwdriver and tighten it down. Okay, there we go. That's more than tight enough. And you can go ahead and feed your coolant hose into the new clip. Now with that secured, we have our left hand side of things situated. This will no longer be used that secured the old plastic pipe. So you can go ahead and set it to the side with your stock unit. But now, Left hand side is all buttoned up. Let's go ahead and wrap up the right hand side. Now on the passenger side of things, we're gonna do the same process and start by installing our ducting first with those same two rivets that we have left over. Let's we'll start by feeding our ducting in. You always wanna make sure the carbon goes over the stock factory ducting. Once we have the ducting situated, you can reach over from the front and feed it in at least on the engine side of things. Then lock in the tab. On the other side, I'm gonna to try to use those long reach pliers this time. There we go, baby. All right, my good people, we have the passenger side loosely put together. Your smaller of the three uh, boots, connecting boots, goes on the inside elbow that connects to the lower charge pipe. Then you have the thicker boot, I'm sorry, the thicker connecting joint that goes between your elbow and your filter. We have this literally all loose. The only clamp that's tightened down is this inboard one right here and this inboard one right here. That way we can adjust our filter and adjust our elbow. So we're gonna feed it in as one, and then we'll adjust it, and then we'll make sure that this can clip into the grommet against the fender, and then we can go ahead and tighten everything down. All right, this one's a bit tricky to feed in just because the space is kind of tight. You're gonna to wanna to push up gently against your ducting if it gets in your way, but it's mainly just the rubber seals binding up together. I'm gonna to pop it into the grommet just like we did on the other side first. Then you can massage the ducting and the face of the filter to meet nicely together. The V2 is cool because they kind of uh, solve the issue where this was a bit opening. Uh, the V2 allows for better intake air temperatures that are more consistent versus occasionally catching in some hot air from the old opening that the V1 units had. All right. We're just gonna grab a flashlight, make sure our inner elbow is fully seated to the connecting joint. That looks beautiful. And now it's just a matter of securing it. This is where the CTA flexible screwdrivers are really gonna come in handy. Or a swivel on a small extension would do the trick as well. I'm running just out of reach. I'm gonna swap over to a socket and a small ratchet really quick. We'll just snug it up the rest of the way. With that nice and situated, we can tighten, tighten down our final clamp. Don't forget to plug in your mass airflow sensor once more. Now for this one, because it sits a little bit lower back, oftentimes you'll find yourself having to remove the beauty cover and unhooking the wiring from the little retaining clip that holds it on the valve cover. We're gonna do that right now. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this beauty cover off. Just held in by rubber grommets. 
We're gonna free it up right here. Go ahead and plug it back in. Tuck that down like that. And then you can reinstall your beauty cover. Beautiful. With all that situated, all we have left to do is to reinstall our strut brace and our ducting. But before we reinstall the strut brace, let's go ahead and work on the ducting next. All right, my good people, now comes the fun part, which is removing our grills. If you're familiar at all with F30, F80, F82 grills, you know that usually people take off the bumper or they force the bumper off or they squeeze some picks in there. The best way even to recommend, and I agree with them, to remove this uh, grill on either end to get our scoops in is simply by undoing partial hardware on the bumper. So to do that, we're gonna start by removing our weather stripping. This just lifts up, kind of keys into place. Go ahead and set this over to the side. Then we have some hardware to remove up front, starting with two T20s, one on either end by our headlights. From there, we have six T30s that we wanna remove from the front that sat under the weather stripping as well. All right, my good people, with the hardware removed, now we can go ahead and work on pulling down the front half top of our bumper here just enough so that we can squeeze our pick tool in and work on releasing the top tabs for the grill. Once we have those started, we'll get a little bit more eye level with the grill and we'll work with the lower tabs from the front. So let's get to it. So we're gonna start with the outside grill. I'm sorry, we're gonna start with the far end. Press that down, kind of wiggle it towards the outside of the car while we do that. Just gonna have to work them all a bit. There's one, there's two, there's three. Now reaching in through the front, I'm just using pick and doing the same action, trying to raise up this middle tab so we can work this grill out. All right, with all the clips removed, arguably the hardest one is the inside one here on the grill. But once you get them all freed out, you can pop them out and then you can reach inside with your hand and work the other side out. So let me go ahead and get the other grill off and then we'll start installing our scoops. With both grills out, the next step is gonna be to remove this grate that's located on the inside of the ducting. So you're simply gonna pull towards you and unhook it from the plastic tabs that it locks into. I'll show you more once we pull it out. Then you can pull it forward. So basically what we're pulling here is the rubber around the grate that locks into these two tabs. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. Once you have that removed, you can work on installing your ducting. Just feed it into the front here. Careful not to scratch your bumper. Once you have your scoop lined up in place and you have it fed into the cowl, you're gonna to wanna to take the locating tab, line it up with the brace. There's a small hole designed for the rivet. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and pop it in and lock it into place. All right, now I'm just using these pliers like I showed you earlier to feed this grommet in, or sorry, feed this rivet in. Here's a better look at where that sits. It's a really tight squeeze, but once it's in there, it's not gonna go anywhere. With this one nice and situated, now we can head over to the passenger side and do the exact same thing. Same thing as before, pulling up on the rubber to release those tabs on the grate. Feed that into place, and then we can feed in our rivet and lock it in. Okay, have it fed into place. We can push in and lock it. There we go. With those both situated and secured, we can go ahead and pop our grills back in. Here's a better view again, if we didn't catch it the first time, of the tabs that we're taking care of. You have three on the bottom. You have three on the top. You have one on the inside and you have one on the outside, as well as this tiny one for the exterior part of the grill. This one kind of just comes out, it's more of an alignment pin than anything. So we'll pop these back in, but first, let's clean this up a bit. Much better. With that cleaned up, now we can reinstall our grills. Now let's go ahead and re-secure our bumper up top by adding those eight pieces of hardware. Now when you reinsert the top half of your bumper, you wanna make sure uh, you key it in to these four body clips. They kind of just pinch it into place. Sometimes you need to realign your hardware that the bolts thread into. Then we'll feed in our six T30s by hand. We'll also feed in our two 
T20s by hand as well. That way we know all the hardware can get to its home without having to adjust the bumper too much. And we'll start by tightening down the six T30s. You can see this is still kind of grimy here. I kind of like leaving that whenever I'm taking a body panel apart so I can use it to make sure the hardware goes back in in the same spot. So once we're done with that, we'll clean it all up. Let's up over to our T20. We have one on the driver's side headlight. And one on the passenger. You're just snugging that on. Doesn't need to be very tight. With that on, we can take our weather stripping and lay it back over. The ends are gonna tuck in under the fender above the headlight. Get it roughly lined up first. And then I like to start at the middle, lock it in, and then just work my way out. With that situated, all we have left to do is to reinstall our strut brace. So let me grab that, bring it over, and we'll get it on. Now we're gonna reinstall our strut brace, line it up. We'll start with the two 13s up front. If you remember, those were the two shorter ones out of the eight. We're just gonna loosely get them started by hand. Then we'll start the three 13s by hand as well on each corner. While I'm over here, I'm also gonna feed in the 10 millimeter back into our coolant reservoir. And once we are happy with all of them and how it's lined up, we can go ahead and snug them down real quick with the 13 millimeter socket, and then we'll torque them down properly. We'll snug down that 10 really quick with the electric ratchet. And now we'll torque all eight 13 millimeters to 28 Newton meters. With those situated, we wanna make sure our weather stripping is back in place. Remember the driver's side was the one that had one rivet on it that holds it into place. Back over on the passenger side, you simply wanna tuck it into the receiving weather stripping. Now with that, all that we have left to do is to reinstall our cowling. So I'll start over on the passenger side. We'll feed it into place. You wanna make sure that inside of it locks with the cowl by the windshield wipers. And then 10 millimeter socket in hand, just a quarter turn for all three lockers. These are gonna lock in clockwise. And then don't forget your rivet on the end by the hood shock. And with that, we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing on the driver's side. And there you have it, my good people. Another DIY in the books. Overall, this was a fun one and absolutely a beautiful one. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, or there's something specific you wanna see done on the F82, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.